So, fellas, you know, first off, man, I want to let you all know it's an honor and a privilege, you know, to be before you all. I got great respect and admiration for what you all are a part of in your journey. I want to thank Duke, man. Thank you so much for thinking enough of me and provide me with this opportunity and the whole organization. I want to thank Rob, man. Rob is like a brother to me. He was in my wedding. He's my roommate in college. I remember when his car used to get declined, you know, all that. Couldn't pay his rent, all that, right? So that's my guy. But um, the reason I showed that clip, there was one line in there that hit me and it stuck. And the one line was, um, like the dude that came to see him on the horse, like I don't know if y'all remember the movie, but he was riding with him. Like he was riding with him at every single battle. Like he, it was a point in every single battle when it got tough, and uh, Leonidas with his 300, when it got a little tough, he would call on the Arcadians and they'll come from between the rocks, they'll come out with their crew and they'll wipe out whoever they was going against and they'll handle it, right? And so at a certain point, my man saw up on the hill, he saw a little humpback dude and he saw some more soldiers, more than they had ever saw. And so he came to him, but he was riding with him at every single battle, but he came to him when he saw more than he had ever saw. And he said to him, it's over. And he said, we must surrender. And I don't know if you saw the movie, but every time somebody said something to him, like they wanted to make him king. They told him they'll give him everything he was fighting for. They came to him at one point, they came to the United States, they said, we'll give you everything you want. Like you fighting for your land, you can have your land. You want water, like you can have your water. Everything you fighting for, we'll give it to you and we'll make you king. You'll reign supreme over everything and everybody got to report to you. They told him that, but they said one word. And when they said the one word, every time they said the one word, he'll walk off and he'll shake his head. And the one word that they said was submit. Every time they mentioned submission, it was like he just went into another mold and he wasn't trying to hear him. So when my man came to him on the horse, he said, we got to submit. When he said, we got to submit, you saw his eyes got big and he went, he transformed into something else. He went to him, the thing that stuck to me, Duke, he told him, every man must search his own soul. And he said, while you at it, like you've been battling with me, you've been going with me. But when the adversity and the opposition and the challenge got tough, you said, you got to go. Like we dead. So you, while you at it, you search your own soul and you run off. And you tell everybody we're going to stand and we're going to live and we're going to die by what we stand for. And everybody going to know what we represent and what we're a part of. Because we said, at a certain point, we said we was going to live and we going to die by it. And the thing I love about sports and the thing I love about life, whatever you want, you got to be willing to accept whatever come with it. Like it's like a cat in the street. If you want to be a gangster, you can't be a gangster until you meet a gangster. Like you can't be a warrior until you meet a warrior. You say, no, I don't want to be a warrior no more. Like you got to be willing to accept whatever come with it. And he was talking about 11, 15 meetings. And I was talking to Rob in the car. And I said, man, the dangerous thing about having talent, like when you're in the league, everybody can run fast, jump high, hit cats. Everybody can cut it and slice it however you want to cut it and slice it. Everybody can play ball, right? But the thing about it, I told Rob, you got to be careful when you got talent because sooner or later, if you're not careful, you could become a victim of your own talent. And when you become a victim of your own talent, you don't value the small things anymore. And at a certain point in the early years, the small things were the foundation. And this is the thing that got you to the point that you are at now. But now we don't value it because we feel as if we've gotten to a certain point. Like adversity is adversity. Opposition is opposition. Challenges are challenges. But it's not so much about the opposition and the adversity that we face as it is about the perspective that we have about the opposition and the adversity that we face. Meaning perspective drives performance every day of the week. How you view what you do will always affect how you do what you do. Like I love 300 just because when they said retreat, my man like we ain't going nowhere. He, you came to me, you came to me, you disrespected my wife, you disrespected, like he could have quit, he could have stopped fighting for it. But the purpose for what he was fighting for was greater than any individual and so he went to war, the purpose. Meaning the thing of what he was fighting for was greater than any individual, was greater than any 300. And when he died, I'll never forget, one of the soldiers laid down. He said, man, it was an honor to die by you. It was an honor to die by you. And he told me it was an honor to live by you. Like, you know the reason he said I was one of the most important people in his life? It wasn't that I could run fast. I played corner. I wasn't the biggest, the fastest, the strongest. But he knew every time we stepped out in between them lines, I was willing to die for it, Luke almost lost my life for it. Like it ain't just words. 
Like I made a tackle against Air Force in the fourth quarter, two minutes left in the game. They carried me off on the stretcher. We got to the emergency room. They ran some tests, and the doctor came into the room, and he said, everybody rush out. We got to rush this kid back to emergency surgery. He's about to die. And I'm looking at him like, die? Like, man, you can't use another word. Like, use a synonym. Like, die, die? And he's like, yeah, you ruptured an artery in your chest. You're bleeding internally. Got to rush you back, take the main vein out of your left leg, plug it into your chest in order to save your life. Next morning, I woke up. I love the game of football. I've been playing it since I was seven. But the next morning I woke up, my arm was paralyzed. Been paralyzed for the past 12 years. Got cut six times down my left eye, one time across the left side of my neck, one time across the right side, twice through my right ribs, cut out my right pec, bottom of my armpit, to the bottom of my hand. Put 350 staples in my body, and they bandaged me from my neck to my knees. This ain't lip service. They told me to go home. Something terrible happened to you. Go home. Go back to Atlanta. Take a break. Take some time off. You got injured. Said, take time off for what? Go home for what? I'm going to go to practice on Wednesday. Even though I can't compete, I'm going to go to practice until I can compete. Even though my career is over, I'm going to get a Dunjoy sling and I'm going to be in the sand pit with my teammates and my line, Luke Stocker. I'm going to run every hill with my teammates. I'm going to run around the block with my teammates. Even though I can't play, but I made a vow to something that was a lot greater than me. And so what I made a vow to was more important than any stat. Like, for me, what trumps everything is character and integrity. What trumps everything is when a cat is rocking with me, he know at a certain point I'm not retreating. If I'm with him and I say I'm going home, we going home. And whatever got to happen on the way to getting home, if we got to wipe some cats out on the way to getting home, like you got two type of cats in the world. You got a cat that's talented until it get hot in the kitchen. Then you, you got a cat that's just all out with it. You got certain cats, they with it until it get hot. Then they don't want them them cats in the fourth quarter, they tapping that helmet like, coach, I need to come out, sub me. Then you got cats that say, this is why I play the game. This is what I signed up for. Like when we do every, like all that other stuff is cool, but when it get hot and it's fourth and goal, like and nobody wants it, I want, the, like you got cats that's cut like that. Like it's a crazy thing. I was reading a story about Navy SEALs and they was talking about them. They was talking about the training that they go through and they was talking about Hell Week. And they said Hell Week is literally designed just to break them, send them through hell. Like you want to be, you want to be a war, you want to be a seal, toughest of the tough, baddest of the bad, we're going to see how bad you want to be a seal. And the way they gauged it was, they let them push themselves and see if they was willing to die for it. And so when cats would pass out and almost die, they would wake them up and the cats would wake up and they would be like, I'm ready. And they would slap them and say, no, you good. You, you put your life on the line. You good. And when they got in the hell week, the crazy thing was, like they had units. In this particular book, and the units that they had, James, right, they started to trace it back in the units because some cats that made it through Hell Week the year prior, they didn't make it the next year, right? It's just like the league. Some cats, they're going to make it this year. Next year, they ain't going to be nowhere to be found because they ain't going to have that same bite. Not that they don't have enough talent. They ain't going to have that same bite. Whether they got bread, whatever the case may be, whether they got a whip, a how, whatever the case, they ain't going to have that same bite, right? And so when they started tracing it, the craziest thing was they found out the cats that surrendered, everybody they trained with surrendered. They noticed the cats that quit and said, I thought this was what I wanted to do. They traced it back to their group. Everybody they trained with quit and said, this is what I thought I want. If I got to go through that, I don't want it so bad anymore. Then they got to the cats that made it, and it, it wasn't like they put them in a separate, separate environment. They put them through the same training. It's like off-season. Everybody go through the same off-season. It's like when cats go in the weight room, everybody go to the same weight room, but everybody don't come out the same way. It's like when cats on the team, everybody get the same schedule, but everybody don't go about their schedule and their business the same way. It wasn't like they put one set of cats in this water, another set of cats in that water. We putting y'all through these rope drills. No, everybody went through the same drills. And the cats that made it and beat it, they said, man, listen, we already know what time it is. We know they finna try to break us. We already know they think we dinner. We already know that. We know they coming at us. We know they gonna throw everything they got at us. So here's how we gonna beat it. Cat just said, I'm gonna look at you. Cat said, we get in the water, we get in the midst of adversity, it start getting a little tough, the pain starts to set in, I'm just gonna look at you and you look at me and I don't have to say a word because what we are working for is greater than me and you and so we gotta press forward and we gotta conquer it. 
We didn't have to say what we just looked at each other. And when I look at you, the power of the other person, the accountability and the responsibility of what we working for. And I respect you so much. And I know you handling your business. I'm not going to quit on you. See, the problem is there's a lot of cats that be talking. But when it comes to their actions, their actions betray their words. And so now you got a contradiction and a cat ain't respecting that. When you start talking about men, men ain't respecting that. Like they can hear you talking about it, but if you ain't living it, a cat ain't trying to hear it. And a cat's actions betray their words every day of the week. Like I asked the cat two weeks ago, I said, man, do you think it's possible that you can be a great football player, but you can suck as a father? Cat told me, yeah, I said, it's impossible. He said, how so? I said, you take the same mindset. I said, the same mindset you approach ball with, that's going to be the same mindset when one day you get trusted with something that's a lot greater than you. Like as a father, right, when you got a family, you call to be three things. You call to be a priest, a provider, and a protector. That's it. And so if you can't be trusted in a huddle, what make you think when you get a shorty, you're going to be like, I got you, when you don't feel like it. Like everybody is good until they don't feel like it. Then when they don't feel like it, the actions and everything they said goes out of the window. Like I find it amazing. I find it amazing how a cat can say they want something, right? A cat can say, man, I'm all in with you. Let's ride. They can say they want something. And then conditions and circumstance change. And the words that they once spoke means nothing to them. Like the commitment level of it. Like I was taught commitment is staying true to what you said you was true to long after the mood that you set it in has left. Meaning on the days when we don't feel like doing what we once said we was going to do, we're going to step up and we're going to do it anyway because those are the days that build character. Like those type of days. Right? Like I just want one thing from you, man. Like I know you got it. I know you can ball. I know you can run, jump. I know you can do it. I know you can fill a gap, blow a cat up. I know that. But everybody don't got that mentality. Like everybody don't got that mentality when a cat drop five in a row and they come to work and they still got that bite and they go about their business the same way as if they would have won five in a row. Everybody don't got that bite. Because everybody ain't trained. Like cat got like light switch mentalities. They turn it on, turn it off, depending upon who they going against. Like it's like in college when you got a little, little paper captain, right? And he getting on all the walk-ons. But with his boys, he ain't saying nothing. He don't want to challenge him. He don't want to say nothing. But I thought at the foundation of football, the brotherhood of it, I thought it was love. And so if I love you, I love you enough to check you and say something to you, not only because I want you to be a great football player, I want you to be a great man because I understand this. Well, who we are as people will always be more important than who we are as football players. And what I mean by that is who we are as fathers and husbands and men in general will always be more important than who we are as athletes. Like at a certain point, man, talent can only take you so far. At a certain point, character got to kick in. Sir. I'll never forget, man, I watched EB. EB left chemo, and EB went to the track one day. After chemo, he went to the track, and I'm talking about running 400s and crying. Going around the track, crying after chemo, and he crying, and he said, I'm crying not because I'm in so much pain. I'm crying because I'm not who I used to be, but I know I'll come back one day stronger than I used to. That ain't talent. Come on, a cat got his head shaved, eyebrows fell off, mustache fell off. That ain't talent. That's essence. That's who I am. Warrior. Like, that's just who he is. Get hit with cancer, whatever the case may be, on Sunday. Like, that's essence. Like, some cats just show up for a game. When it's a cat's essence, that's who they are. They catch you in the jungle. They catch you on the beach. They catch you in the facility. They going to do you whenever they see you. That's just who cats are. And you got some cats, they ain't got that mentality like that. Like yesterday, what you did, like the thing I love about football, man, and we all know, like I play ball, y'all play ball. The thing I love about it is like X's and O's and strategies, that's cute. They could do it. We could run a stunt. We could run a blitz. We call a great play. But when, when, when it all boils down to what it is, mano y mano. And if you ain't got more heart than me, if you ain't been working harder than me, if you ain't sacrificed more than me, I'm going to destroy you, and I'm not retreating. I'm not running. I don't care what they say on paper. I don't care how many games you won. I don't care if you say we outnumbered. We live by this and we die by this. We don't retreat. We don't run. Every man must search his own soul. 
That's why that Martin Luther King quote, that's why I say what it is. Like you don't judge a person by where they stand in times of comfort and convenience. You judge them by where they stand in times of challenge and controversy. And if you ain't work, like when you work for something, it gives you a different type of attachment to it. The harder you work, the harder it is to surrender. That's why cats can give up so easy. They ain't got nothing invested. They ain't work for it, they ain't sacrifice for it. Every time it get tough, they go blow weed. They ain't working for it, right? They ain't got nothing sacrificed into it. But when a cat work for something, like when a cat been sacrificed for something, well, you're going to have a cold day in hell before you take it from them. Because they value it different. They look at, even if they drop one or two, it's a part of the process. It's evolution. Embrace the process, trust the process. But most importantly, you got to respect the process. Talent would never supersede it. I just want one thing from you, man. In life, no matter if a cat play ball, no matter if a cat is an attorney, an artist, whatever the case may be, cats don't burn out because of what they do. Like cats don't just start saying, man, you know what, I thought I wanted to play ball, whatever. Oh, cats burn out because life makes them forget why they do it. Opposition, adversity, challenge. Never forget why you do what you do. I'm not talking about college. I'm not talking about when you first got to the league and you got drafted. I'm talking about when you was coming up in Cali, New Jersey, Indianapolis, Miami, and you was in the street, or you was at the park, and your mom had to go sacrifice and work so you get your pair of cleats. I'm talking about that bite, because everybody don't remember that. People don't burn out because of what they do. People burn out because life makes them forget why they do it. Character supersedes talent every day of the week. No retreat. No surrender. We live and we die by this. Every man must search his own soul. At a certain point, don't let your actions betray your words, man. That's my time. God bless y'all. Peace. Yep. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, brother.